Oh, you're trying to do that. That's the intro. That's your intro. Well, <laughs> well we're getting rid of Gilbert, and that's going to do that. I'm taking over now. Okay, so you, are you going to record that so I can use that then? <laughs> I'm going to mix it. You're going to mix it. Do, do, do. Okay. Garage band. Garage band? Yeah, yeah. That's what I use. I'll just, just free shit. Free shit? Just buy, you have to buy a MacBook to get it. What is your, what is your garage band band name? Not going with that yet, Chris. That's work in progress. Okay. I'll have my own uh, Apple Music page. My own Spotify page. I'll be on Google Podcasts <laughs> as well. <laughs> and Google Play. <laughs> Get your own app. But yeah. Anyway, at the actual intro, welcome back to the Peter Spy Show episode... Nine? Nine. <laughs> it's come. It's here. It's finally here. We're, what, nine now? Do not explain? I mean... Does it not, need to explain? No. No, okay. Nothing needs explaining. There might be a bonus version of, of, of attached to this episode at some point. <laughs> episode nine, nine point nine. nine. Yeah, yeah. It'll be nine point nine, and it'll, it'll make sense. I'll just, I'll just do all that. That's fine. <laughs> but yeah, well, uh, welcome, welcome back to all our listeners, all our new listeners, many new listeners recently. I mean, it says now from the average listener count on Anchor, it says from six now to seven. So we've got at least one new listener. Yeah, exactly. So shout out to you, whoever you are, whoever yeah. you are, nameless. <laughs> It's like the faceless in Game of Thrones, isn't it? It could, it yeah. could, it could essentially be one person who's seven people. Do we know where that person's from? We've got any? Oh, I think they're from the UK as well. We've got no, no new country than that. It's so. also one percent Jamaica. Still, yeah. So either this Jamaican person is still listening. If it's just one percent, that must be people one listen, mustn't it? So I think they've just listened and thought, yeah, that's that's not it's it. Not for us, yeah. yeah. But yeah, anyway, uh, I uh, hello, my name is James. If you are. <laughs> one of the new listeners. Hello, my name is Chris. If you're one of the new listeners, <laughs> and how have you been this week, Chris? Uh, okay, feels a bit weird because we kind of pre-recorded an episode yesterday. We did for next week, <laughs> which we will mention in a second as well. But yeah, it was getting so we recorded yesterday, but that episode is getting released after this episode. So it's all very. Yeah, I still thought today was almost. Well, I thought today was work in a way. No. Because I thought yesterday was Friday. No, no. Today's Friday. Today's Friday. There you go. You've got a whole, whole extra day. Whole extra day. So for us, listening to this, we've already done the other one, but for you listening to this, you yet to hear it. It's all very... It's like breaking the time paradox again. Yeah, yeah. It's all very, uh, all very up and down. Uh, anyway, at the, at the top of the episode, let's get the usual stuff out of the way. Oh, still the housekeeping, yeah. Shout out to, still, to Gilbert still, while, whilst, whilst we can, before I... Before you start making, trumpet replaces making him. trumpet beats. Um, again, follow us on socials, Twitter, Instagram, and then wherever you listen to podcasts. We've got, we don't need to list them all now. We do it every week. I hit, mean, just look, click on the link tree. Hit that link tree. You can, you can, you find can just us choose there. whatever branch you want exactly, to go for. Exactly. Whichever suits you best. Um, exciting news this week as well. Just wanted to get this out of the way uh, with the podcast. Uh, Hardcore listeners will know we've been at, at war with Canada. Although we've not really mentioned it as much recently. No, well, I, I said last week that we should be building bridges. I wanted to... I I think I actually helped this situation. So I said last week, I think it was last week, that the war with Canada, I think... I'm happy to put it to bed. I think we should be building bridges. You were having none of it. But now it's over. Canada have come back to us with a, a little... Not a white flag... Because they've not. Oh, surrendered. their flags not white anyway, is it? So. But got white in it. <laughs> <laughs> but they've come to us and said, "Listen, we don't want this heat." Oh, so you had di- you had diplomatic meetings behind my back. I thought you said. I just near the po- I just near the podcast. All, right, okay. All I'm saying is, it's, is it, it seems a coincidence to me that I said it's over. Was it like a coded message? It wasn't. I mean, it so. wasn't really coded, but I like so. just in Trudeau. Yeah. On holiday in Jamaica. That one listen. Some people call you the Trudeau of Yorkshire, mate. Yeah, so. Jim's Trudeau. That's my nickname. <laughs> so that's just another name I JT, go by. JT, mate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. J Trudes. <laughs> if I think they listen to this. Fun fact. Uh, the Canadian Parliament building in um, in Ottawa. Yeah. I was pissed on the ground in that building. Wow. Yeah. That could re- reignite the war again. That could do, but it's <laughs> over now, so that not fuck all I can do about it. So yeah, so the Sharon, Sharon and Van Etten. The, the the thing that caused it all was a Sharon Van Etten, a clip of Chris listening 
the Sharman album from last year on vinyl and it got copyrighted. Only by, in Canada. By Canadian bastards. <laughs> oh, so we thought at the time. So we thought so you, at the time. I think, I think you still have, you're still a bit. That was us at the time. Okay. But now they've they've realised the, the error in their ways. They've said, oh, we're, we're not going to dispute that anymore. You can have see that video if you do, if you are in Canada, and we're on good terms with Canada now. The only the only beef we have now is with Cedric Duverse. Well, we have to get her to speak to our our British, the British Duverse, uh, yeah, Ricky. Possibly. <laughs> to what his name was. <laughs> the British Duverse. <laughs> Ricky, that's who it was. Ricky Duverse. <laughs> but so, anyway. Thanks, Canada. We love you. Well, you love him. <laughs> I may forever. I, I, you know, a percent of my heart may hate you. Never. I'm. I, I'm here for you, Canada. Any anyway, other than that? Other than that, exciting news. Any anything else happened for you this week? Any? No, not really. Any major things? Major things? No. No. You? Um Not really. We. What happened? We recorded last week, didn't we? When afterwards recorded. Nothing too crazy. Well, we had a few drinks. Yeah. I had work next day. Didn't feel great about that. Thanks. You're a, you're a machine, Chris. It's apparently so. <laughs> <laughs> Still alive, I guess. Still breathing. Yeah, other than that, though, pretty, pretty standard. So thing. where are you going next week, then? So, so yeah, there, so we've had to pre-record. I'm off to, I'm off to Bulgaria tomorrow. Where about? It's a ski resort called Pump. Pamperova or something like that. Oh, go cool. Pamperova, yeah. Yeah. Now, if we, if we're potentially depending on developments, and we'll may speak about this soon as it's in capital letters there. If I come back and there's no episodes for two weeks, I may be in quarantine, depending on. Oh yeah. So, yeah. Th- thankfully, we didn't go skiing in Italy because obviously northern Italy there's been outbreaks there, so. And I was looking yesterday, I don't think there's any confirmed cases in Bulgaria yet, but there's confirmed cases in in Romania, obviously just above. I think also in North Macedonia, which is to the southwest. I think so, I think of Macedonia, I just think of like the Trojans and And coronavirus now. Yeah. But there's they're, they're the new, it's new Trojan. Yeah, well, it's a bit of a Trojan also, if you need to it. <laughs> yeah. Well, so yeah, if I do come back, not, not to make light of this, it's a serious situation, obviously. Yeah. But if I do come back and, I, you know, we still have to record over Skype and it's all a bit weird, or it's just Chris for a couple of weeks, it's because so, I'll I'm, find some people It's because I'm in quarantine, that's okay. why. So if, we don't, if I don't see you for a couple of weeks, we should have got more episodes in the bank just in case. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of predicted anyway, yeah. stuff. Okay. Well, hopefully everything will be fine. Yeah. So where 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 is that near so- Sofia? Uh, it's no, it's well, we we'll, we're flying to Sofia and then we've got like a three hour drive to. Oh, so it's not near. Then, right? Yeah, yeah, it's like. Uh, so Sofia's like there. To Sofia. And then Pamperov's like there. Oh. I've I I am showing this with my hands on a fake map in front of us. If you are listening, uh, you say fake map. There's no map there at it's all. A fake map. <laughs> it's a fake map. It's imaginary an imaginary map. map. <laughs> I made it on dreams. All right. Well, this is this is your dream. Dream ski trip in it. Yeah, really? look on look on a map if you are listening, and then you will see. Then you will see. So the episode we recorded yesterday was our our long awaited, long anticipated uh, review of the decade twenty ten to twenty nineteen. So we ran through our top well individually, blow for blow, our top ten albums of that decade. Now to set expectations. We haven't listened to a lot of these albums for a lot of for a few years because a lot of them came out, you know, ten years ago. So if you're expecting a massive deep dive into every single album, it's not that. It's pretty much like how we do it, even anyway. Yeah. It's like just, we just kind of raw riff through it, kind of fumble our way through things, yeah. and, and then and then as with the 2019 review, we then do the ultimate official, not to be disputed, top ten album of the decade according to the Peter Spy Show. So the leading authority. Yeah. So tune into that next week. That is that's gonna be that's hot shit. Uh but because of kind of time and stuff like that, we didn't re- and given that we you know, we talk about the other albums, we didn't really get a chance to talk about some like honorable mentions as well. So maybe run through a few of those 
in a in a bit in a second. Yeah, just as a bit of a, a bit of a prelude to the. I mean, the, the I'll be episode. honest. I haven't listened to anything for the decade, so <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it was all based on memory. But anyway, other than that, what have you what one. have you been listening to this week? What I've been listening to, some, you know, some some newer shit. So what I've been listening to, we'll start off with um, King Cruel or mm-hmm. King Cruelay. Mm-hmm. I want to keep calling him King Cruelay's <laughs> album. <laughs> What's it called again? Uh, Man Alive, I think. I think it is called Man Alive. I had it just there a second ago. There it is, yeah, Man Alive. Uh, Real King, Cru- King Cruelay. King Cruelay. Man Alive. <laughs> Man Alive. Uh, yeah, I think it's a really good album. I mean, I've never really properly listened to, to King Cruelay before. And uh, I remember that when his first album came out, it wasn't... I think I, I think I tried it. It wasn't really my cup of tea at the time. Yeah, I think we were saying a couple of episodes ago that ne- when he first came out, neither of us really got into him as such then, did we? But I, I guess, you know, which is, you know, I can understand, maybe reflecting, like maybe the people lot saw a lot of potential in him that maybe at the time I didn't. But in, that, that happens sometimes with age. And so if someone is, is good at their craft and they want to keep honing it, so just you know, putting a project out every second then eventually they're going to get a good album or an album that could, you know, change my mind or opinion on them. Because I do remember, I remember hearing a lot about, was it the, the, the Ooze that came out last time? Meant to be really, really good. So I, I probably will go back to that now. But um, yeah, it's just a really, really cool album. Um, and I, I know I've we'll put a couple of songs on there, but it's just, I, I think it's because it's it's very British in a way that I sound like that's, again, you know, going towards episode ten about the sort of post punk, sort of sounding people. Although it's not like a, it's not post punk at all, really. But it's like his voice has got that sort of attitude on it. It's quite a bleak album. <laughs> I'll be honest. I like that sort of stuff, as I pretty much mentioned in episode zero. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so it's kind of like um, yeah, it's like a theme of just trying to be like you know what's going around his surroundings and trying to kind of come to terms and stuff and. I think I think he did this. He he wrote wrote most of this. I think well during the last album, the Ooze. I think, but then what happened? Or maybe after the Ooze, and then apparently, his girlfriend or wife, uh, then gave birth. So then I think they put it aside. So it's kind of going back to those sort of things or something something along those lines. I know what I read. <clears throat> but yeah, it's got it's got kind of like a bit of everything really, and it's kind of really sort of slow songs, kind of like sort of experimental sounding songs. There's, you know, um, I think I put on Stoned again, which is kind of, which is kind of more of a punky sort of hook towards it. Um, I think if you like Alone Omen Three, which is what was which was the sing which was the single I really liked to begin with. That's which well, that's the second, the second one. one yeah. Come out, yeah, I think that's pretty much kind of you get bits of that throughout the album like that as well, and then Celia, which is the opening track, is just kind of like a. I can't think what I was trying to remember what I thought about it. it's it reminds me of something I can't remember exactly what it is <laughs> I have to remember okay. it might come back to me but yeah that was that really good album I think if you like that sort of stuff it's very alternative it's very very sort of um, stripped back in how he, how he sort of delivers stuff but then it's also like really good like arrangements in terms of each sort of song and it all kind of works in together and I think it kind of all bleeds into one thing as well. It's, it's kind of really well mixed. So it's like an album that you should really... It's really hard to pick out a song. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it all kind of complements each other, really. So that's that yeah. was really good. Yeah, but it's one that... It's, I think I'm really stud. I didn't get a chance to, to listen to it this week. But, you know, I think that's a couple of weeks before we... But I don't think it's not long either. It's, what, 42 minutes? Yeah, so it kind of goes by. Perfect perfect, perfect amount of sort of uh, time for an album. The other album I listened to... Um, a long, long-awaited album, "The Allegory" by Royce the Five Nine. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, we've just literally watched the freestyle that came out yeah, r- well, roughly after a few days after LA Leakers. LA Leakers one hundred. Um, pretty much what you hear in that in that freestyle is well, the first part of the freestyle is pretty much on one of the songs that Thou Shall, which is the song on that on our uh, playlist. Um, I actually watched uh, the Needle Drops review on this because mm-hmm. I was interested. Mainly, for, well, two things. He's said on one of the, one thing. Maybe it was on Eminem's last album or one of the things where 
he's never been that that impressed by Royce overall. In conjunction with that, Royce then tweeted at one point, "I just want to know. I, now I'm definitely going to impress you. I don't know what I want to take. I will impress you." I was hoping this album was going to be the case, and I get some of the the sort of issues that Royce uh, that uh, um, the Needle Drop have, but it's a really, really, really good album. I think the theme of the allegory, much like what the Needle Drop say, is a loose concept. I think it's a great arrangement of songs. I think <clears throat> when it's an hour eight minutes, it doesn't feel like an hour eight oh, minutes, right. which is a good okay. thing. Okay. But at the same time, it's still an hour and eight minutes. <laughs> uh, so you could drop about three or four songs. I mean, again, not to kind of just quote a needle drop, but I think it's the next single as well. Tricked is the worst song on the album. That's the next single. Right. I like, <laughs> like needle, he's been tricked. He's been tricked. She's been tricked. <laughs> like, that's basically the hook. I think it's a good, it's a good uh, concept. Of the whole, the whole tricking thing, you know, you know how, how we, our, our, our perception, King Crooked, or Crooked Eye, so always Con Crooked Eye, um, has probably a better verse on that on that track than than Royce does, but it's just it's so it's it's an irritating song because because of that hook and because of how the beat the beat represents that hook as well. I've been tricked. You've been tricked. She's been tricked. They've been tricked. But then like the rapper like that though as well. Okay. So, so you can understand how we, when it's what how long was it how long was the track three minutes forty one seconds oh, yeah. and the beat is like that as well so for, I'm the, like, for the full Chris just said his ad, yeah. he said in his answer if you could. uh yeah so there is obviously skits that are very pertinent um about sort of being a black man in America growing up and not the sort of you know you know perspective whereas one of the skits is with Eminem talking about um. Elvis and how he kind of borrowed from like you know, you know, well like Chuck Berry and stuff like mm-hmm, that. Mm-hmm. So although you know again, <laughs> Neil Trump did say like which, was, which was, I think was really interesting is there's quite a lot of similar sort of things with that with Eminem. Not saying he exploited any sort of black music, yeah, but it's yeah. very similar in terms of the you know the the fame that he acquired. So I think. <laughs> If I'm gonna if I'm gonna compare the last three projects, this is still a very very good project, and I think it just literally it showcases how Royce can rap on almost anything, and he has a a flow that can he can change on the dime, and I think the production is probably the which is he's handled almost all of it is the probably the best part of it. I think the production's phenomenal uh, for someone who's only just started making beats a year or so ago. Yeah incredible oh, i think all the um all the features are really really good um i just feel like i don't know i feel like i'm not underwhelmed i think it's still very good i think it's like if i'm gonna give a number by like an eight out of ten maybe because i can easily go back to the album i want it to be more i think if you know judging by that freestyle it's like you, you just felt it's like he's clearly got it yeah he's yeah. clearly got he's got He's got bags of potential, still even even late into his career, and he's better than Eminem. Point blank, he's better than Eminem. Yeah, and it's been like that for like past four yeah. or five years at least, and that's what annoys me when I look at Eminem and go, "Well, like, he's your dude. Like, why not look what he's doing?" Layers is a fantastic album. Which was, what two or three years ago, Book of Ryan last year or year before that was a great album as well. It's like he know he knows how to make a good album. I feel this is just a bit too long. And I just feel like Could have... the message of the having a, a name called allegory, and even in one of the skits, literally says the definition of allegory, and you don't feel like you're not really getting that. Could still feel like a collection of songs rather than a concept going throughout. Is that because it is that because it dragged on a bit? Could that be? Could that be better if it were trimmed down? Do you think? Yeah, I think if you if you edit it, if you're gonna have an album which has has like concepts, you would you would definitely want to. Hit the hit the hit the, well hit it hard with the message by dropping a few songs like it's but I don't I don't know what songs you would drop as the thing yeah. there, that when I think about because like like not every song like I said tricked is probably is my least incredibly least favorite track and like upside down featuring with a stellar verse by Benny the Butcher and a really good um I think what's the name her name is uh Ashley Sorrell 
Um, she's got great vocals on Pendulum, Upside Down, and I think one of the last tracks as well. But Upside Down is like a really good song. I think the only issue that I have, well, I wouldn't say it's an issue because I'm not bothered by it because I know it's hip hop and all that sort of stuff, but the first like two or three bars, it's kind of fairly homophobic. <laughs> right, okay. Obviously, it's you know this day and age, it's, it's, it, you don't really hear much of it in hip hop anymore. But there's some, there's some people that you know. I'm not saying he is homophobic, by the way. I'm not saying that. Yeah. It, you could you could interpret them as being homophobic bars. So, it's kind of those sort of things where like, I was gonna have that song actually on the playlist, and I thought I didn't want anyone to kind of get mm -hmm. so misconstrued with it all because the beat is so good. It's like one of my favorite beats on the whole thing, and then Benny just comes in the last like. 40 seconds and just rips it up that's probably my only kind of issue with it but I, 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 I'm not bothered by it because I don't because some people always have that mind state I don't think people are malicious when they say things like that and so I kind of take a slide you know slide out of it because you know I've come from a time where you could say stuff like well say similar stuff like that and not be sort of offended mm -hmm. But I don't, you know, obviously I don't want to offend anyone in a way. That's why I've chosen not to have that on the playlist. Yeah. Um, because that's not my intention. But it's a, it, the beat itself, just to listen to it, is just amazing. So yeah, I, to sum it up, I really like the album. I just wish it was. I just it's feel like this big. could have been the moment. Yeah. I, I feel like stars were aligned to him. M's just dropped an album that was okay. Not one of M's best albums for a few years. Mm -hmm. It could have been Royce come out with this absolutely classic album. I think it just drops a few not things. Quite, not quite there. Nearly there, though. I mean, like, I would say... Almost, I mean, I feel like maybe Layers is probably the best out of the three, but maybe Book of Rhyme is better, actually. I think Book of Rhyme, like the last one, is probably the best album. Because it showcases his sort of ability in terms of, like, making a song, he sings on it, or, you know, and uh, with the, the great song Cocaine, which is such a good song. Um, I just feel like... He, he just... He's always made us... I thought... I've, I will stand by this. He's always made a solid album, especially the, for the past 10 years he's been making solid albums. I just feel like he's put too much... There's too many tra tracks. There's 22 songs and four or five of them are skits. I do think we need to start... Uh, we need to start some kind of campaign, don't we? Yeah. That your album should... 45 minutes. Yeah, your album doesn't need to be over an hour long. No. It just doesn't, doesn't need to be. Especially when, you know, you've got... Kid Fish is on the on, on the Thal... Um, that was Shower Track, which is his, his, which is his younger brother, um, and he says a good line about it being at the rap games, um, over congested or something, something similar to that. It is, and so if you if you know that, make an album that is, that you can get by in forty five minutes, yeah, yeah, yeah. not an hour. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, so that was good. It's definitely worth listening to. Still, so. I know it sounds like I've been, I really did enjoy it. By the way, I listened to it a few times. Uh, it's just I feel like it could have been better. I mean, made my expectations took took the best of me really, um, and then another mellow music produced album or released album in fact, um, forever it's a pretty long time by Eloquent, mm -hmm. um, who I think he retweeted us when I put it out, so we're we're playing it. There you go. Um, so shout out to him for that. Didn't follow his book anyway. <laughs> it's a nice thirty eight minute track uh track album. Perfect. Um, and it's just really good it's just a really nice smooth jazz influence um african influence sort of inst uh, well instrumental album with like some rappers and guests on it that are just that kind of you know really complement um each track really and, it's, and they're not they're not like there's one two three i suppose we can't be intro four four tracks that haven't got any features they're all great tracks anyway um, then you just got you know Odyssey with guidelines which I think I've put on us on our playlist which is, which is a really good track it's nice to hear Odyssey again how I knew about Odyssey was from Mellow Music so it's nice to hear he's still kind of got ties with the label uh, Blues on there you've got Guilty Simpson which is a really good uh, track with Thread Count it's just they all complement each other in such a great way and like I said it's like if you like sort of jazzy sort of I wouldn't say it's lo-fi hip hop but like that sort of because everyone keeps it lo-fi hip-hop is like that relaxing sort of hip-hop sound. It's kind of like that in a way. We've got some sort of African sort of influence to it as well. So I think it's really, really a solid, another solid release for Mellow Music yet again. So 
eloquent. Definitely check that out. Um, and then like there's some singles really. They're the albums I listen to, but then some singles. So we've got um, H's new song Mice. Yeah, yeah. Give it a listen. Listen to it. Yeah. What do you think? I, it's right. I still. I think we said this a few weeks ago. I still think maybe it's just because he's growing into it. I still prefer H feature on a song. I think. Yeah. And I don't. I don't know. But the thing is, so you know, like I, I think we had that conversation where I think some worth, people. I feel. I feel like that one. We were talking about the Storms album. I think we were talking about that. Yeah, and I, I made reference like to one like uh, like uh, what's he called? Mosax. No, well, I wouldn't really want to listen to a full album. Yeah. Him, but like he's good on a, on a feature or a hook. But then sometimes there's some eyes that I like that, which H can be in a way. But you want they can just drop off like a loose single, and kill it. And he's like, actually, you know, I quite like that. Would I want to hear a full album again? I don't know. I mean, H two O was okay. Didn't mind it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he, he, the boy can rap. Which is which is a big tick for me, um, so I don't really know. I mean, the, that sort of track is what I want to want from H. So if you get like three more tracks, a bit like that, with the the all sort of you know girl club banger, then yeah, maybe I don't know. Again, the get the kids what nineteen? Can, yeah, exactly. That's the thing. And in it, ten years' time, yeah. it could be like the most phenomenal. I think it's a, a car like because it, it clearly don't take themselves no. overly seriously. Especially when it comes to the video as well. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I've not. not did you for that? that? Is that a ski, it's at a ski resort, I think, oh, as well. Okay. Funny enough. There you go. There you go. Uh, and yeah, it's like a full little track here. You kind of know what you're getting, don't you? But Just bars, isn't it? It's just yeah, you know, him just rapping, you know, he's showing his, his kind of cool flair. I think the last thing I listened to, going for, I have two, two more things actually. So the other one was Tremendous. It's a new female rapper who signed with High Focus, which is a UK based hip hop uh, label. Uh, really good. Um, Pitch 92 produces it, which he does really good sort of standardised sort of hip hop boom bap for the UK. Um, she's really she's really good. I think she's got a lot of potential. Um, that's the first time I've ever heard of her. But if I focus, I've got belief in her, then usually they're mm. quite right with sort of stuff. So I'm happy with that. And the last thing I listened to was Doom Tree. Now I'm not a Doom Tree for a long, long time as a collective. You have no idea who Doom Tree are. No, no. <laughs> so they are. Let me get this right. So there's a rapper called P.O.S., uh, Mike Mitlin, Sims, Cicelotta, and Dessa. And the producers usually are Laserbeak and someone else I've completely forgotten about. But uh, they're a collective from Minneapolis, kind of round about where Atmosphere are from, but the rally are from. P.O.S. did sign with Rhyme Says, which is the which is the big underground hip-hop label anyway, but they're based in Minneapolis. Um, he's not really signed with them anymore. Doomtree did have their album, I think, out on their label. I'm not too sure though. But they're really cool, sort of unique underground, you know, sort of conscious backpack rap that all complement each other. They've always, they've always had, even even solo wise, they've always been really really good. This is the first time they've all been back as like a big sort of group mm-hmm. group effort, and it's a really really good track and. Um, the last, the last full fledged album, uh, I can't remember what the album was called, but that was that was really really good. And I've I've always been a big fan of P.O.S. In a way, um, he dropped a really good solo album a few years ago with a big like eight minute track on it, which is awesome. Um, but he actually he I actually put money towards um him getting so sort of, I think he has a new kidney. <laughs> when when was this? This is years and years and right, years okay. ago, because uh it was like a life threatening sort of thing as well. So um. I think it was life for I don't know, I can't remember. But I put some money towards it, donating for him, and he got, he got like a brand new kidney or whatever it was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's one of those sort of things. But that's how much I like. I, I love P.O.S. I think he's a, he's a really, really phenomenal rapper. He doesn't, doesn't get sort of the attention he deserves. And I think Doomtree's a really, really good label. Saying that, although P.O.S. and, and the two of the members of Doomtree, they've, they've done a thing called Shredders. I'm not listening to stuff, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> but someone I never got around to. It. I think that's why. Why? But um, I need to go back to that because I know they dropped an album last year. But Doomtree is definitely a group to check out because I really, really think they are. They kind of like. I want. I want to say the conscious version of Slaughterhouse, but they're they're kind of an alternative to Slaughterhouse yeah, in yeah. terms of like they're all really good MCs, 
um, are very sort of they have extensive vocabulary. That's what extensive I'm thinking okay, of, okay. Um, and they're very good at they're very good at using it. But yeah, definitely check it out. Nice, nice. Yeah, a couple uh, other singles that I've listened to as well. Um, new JPEG Mafia single, which is not shown upon my playlist for some reason now. I think I feel like it's called Bald. I feel like I had it on that playlist. It's now not on there. I think it's called Bald. New JPEG Mafia track, which is good. Cool. Yeah, I like JPEG Mafia. Never actually checked him out, by the way. No, good. Last last couple of years, just pretty much. I feel like he's had quite a few albums the last couple of years, and pretty much everything they've he's released has been pretty solid. Um, so I don't know if that means that there's going to be something else coming this year as well, but yeah, and I can't find the, the song, but okay, I will. Cool. I will find the song <laughs> anyway. Um, new single by Thundercat as well, Dragon Ball. Oh, he's Durag. good. Yeah, it's, it's funny as well. Um, in the video, it's really crazy. Cause I, um, yeah, I've not actually seen the video. Yeah, yet. I've yeah, seen clips of the this, video, yeah. I think. But yeah, it's just about doing doing various activities in in a do rag. Cool. And it's you know, it's kind of just th- Thundercat really, and not just any not, not just any do rag though. Dragon Ball, yeah. But yeah, it's you know, it's Thundercat. It is if you. If you like Thundercat, you know what you're getting. And it's just that kind of, you know, it's a funny song. Cool. Sounds like a funny video. It's worth a listen. Yeah. So it's a, it's a good cool. three minutes. So we'll run through, I guess, now, quickly, our honourable mentions. Cause this well, is you what... might as well mention, because like, my honourable mention is a bit like... I didn't, I didn't listen to anything, really. Like, okay. but... Well, this is basically just stuff that I kind of I gave a listen to, because I was like, is this top ten? And then I decided it wasn't top ten. Yeah. But this is kind of what I've uh, spent most of my week listening to. So I'll just run I'll just run through quickly. Uh, let's have a look. Let's have a look. So this is stuff that just, just missed out, really. So I think we both almost agreed on this one, but that it didn't quite make the list because of rules and stuff. We, Arcade Fire, The Suburbs. Yeah, so when you mentioned to... it, I completely forgot about yeah. the album. And I was like, oh, yeah, that was actually quite a significant album because that's the album I can't be into them. So. Yeah. Um, I went back and this is kind of, I feel like I said this on, well, I say this on the episode because if you don't listen to the episode yet, because it's not out yet, that a lot of it were just, not necessarily stuff that, you know, I'd say is like top 10, but just at the time. So the Alt-J album from 2012, and Awesome Wave, at the time that were like the shit for me, really. And I still really like it. Did I, did I tell you about, about Alt-J? I think so. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> um, so I'd never listened to that album, even though it was quite big, even in HMV days. Right, right. And I think it's because the drummer, I know the drummer, he, he used to go to my school. Right. He's <laughs> Tom Green. And for some reason, I just didn't want to listen to it. He refused to listen to it. <laughs> not that I think, I don't think, I've got the, I have nothing wrong with Tom Green. Tom Green's a good, good lad, and he, weirdly enough, he knows he knows my best friend Jeff from like college, so it's a weird sort of thing. But um, I, just, I think because, I think because I knew that he was on it at the time, I just didn't want to acknowledge it. <laughs> <laughs> Not that, again, to, <laughs> to public disclaimer: I do nothing wrong with Alt J. Um, so I've actually never gone back to that album, but I did listen to their last album, which I thought was trash. The, yeah, the last album's not very, very good. Yeah, but the first album's like yeah. The, so I probably the first album is, is by far the best album. Yeah, I probably should listen to it to me, shouldn't I? So yeah, listen to that one. Okay. <laughs> what else? What else? What else was I? Uh, was I going to put on there? I was real close to putting, uh, the GMXX album on there as well. But yeah, didn't quite. Did not. It's not top ten, is it? No. That's why. But then again, we had a GMXX on on the place last week as well, didn't we? Yeah. We can go two weeks in a row. I was very. I was close to putting, uh, Sons of Kemet from twenty eighteen. My Queen is a reptile. Which is a, a jazz album from that year. I was really close to putting that on. No, I just fucking really like that album. And I feel like what was what else was close to getting on? I thought those were the names that were close to getting on. The only other one that stood out to me is like from the time, like yes, uh, the Vaccines debut album in twenty eleven. Yeah, album. and especially like when that came out, that kind of time was when I were, you know, that kind of I think I've said before, but. I said it. I said it on the episode, so you've not listened to it yet again. But when I were listening to that, you know that kind of indie kind of scene, it were 
pro, 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 obviously a big album. For that, for that scene, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's why I got into it. Yeah, but I think even listening back, I think again, like the, the the more recent stuff, I don't think is as good as that. But just listen, I think even listening back to it, it's just, I don't know, just kind of like because they're really enjoyable yeah, in, yeah, uh, in exactly. a, uh, indie album. So the, I mean, the, I, suppose, I suppose we mentioned like you know, run the run the jewels. Yeah, we could, one and two, in fact. Yeah, so so with, without it, well, without TJ, it didn't. It, spoiler alert! <laughs> it didn't make either of our top tens, and then. We couldn't decide because you were going to go RTJ one, I was going to go RTJ two. Yeah, so like the way I looked at it was RTJ one is it was instead of an album of the decade more significant than two. Two is a better album though. I will say, but one was because of the impact and that it kind of came out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. And for me, being found when, separately. When, when, when did one come out? What year did one come out? Twenty. Yeah, because so two was twenty fourteen. Twenty thirteen, yeah, must be because it was a year after one. Right, okay. yeah, so thirteen, it was thirteen or twelve anyway. Um, I think for me, being fans separately of Killer Mike and LP, mm-hmm. it was such a massive. It was like a mind mind blown sort of moment. That's why I think one would probably should be up there rather than two. But if you're looking at it as a quality album, two is better. Uh, I've got no sort of. I mean, even got. Um, Meow the Jewels, which is the uh, remix with all the cats on vinyl somewhere. Um, so uh, yeah, I think that that could have made the list, but didn't. Yeah, and as well, we couldn't decide exactly which one to put on, so that would be that would have caused an issue as well. Are there any others for you that kind of just missed out for you? Then you might not listen back to them, but are there any that you were? I mean, if I'm looking like really good sort of underground hip hop, uh, Rock Marciano's uh, Mathberg would probably be. Be up there, probably again a huge pivotal moment in underground hip hop. This is when that dropped out, uh, two thousand twelve, I think. Um, well, Ace of Rocks, both the track, both albums that like, came out when he when he signed with Vime Series, they were both amazing. I both like both those body works quite a lot. Other than that, we were both we were both Danny Brown. We were both yeah, yeah. we were both we were both close putting Danny Brown in again, but then. <laughs> I went Atrocity Exhibition and you went Triple X and then it didn't make the top ten. Do you know what the so... thing is with that as well though, is that I would have con I would have compromised with old. And the reason being is that Triple X is when everyone really started to know about Danny Brown. Atrocity is probably the better the be- his best album probably. But then old is where it was like in between both those moments where yeah, all I'm hearing is is that the albums I'm picking are the the best albums. That's Yeah, and <laughs> <laughs> I'm going by impact though. When all came out, that was huge. Yeah, yeah. You know, they had such a lot, loads of big bangers. It was like this different way of doing it. Where you had side A and side B on it. Um, he was it was at the height. Well, pretty much it, that's what became in terms of the height of his powers was because of old. So again, with impact, again, all three of these albums are fantastic. Mm-hmm. Atrocity is probably his best album. Mm-hmm. Um, well, yeah, I, I probably would definitely agree with that. To be honest. Um, Agree with myself there. <laughs> um, so yeah, Danny Brown could have made the list, but I felt like I think I think when we look at both our lists separately as well as the the overall undisputed Peter Spice show one, at least it's a bit um, a bit more variance to what to it than yeah yeah. Um, I could have easily had ten hip hop albums. Yeah, there. and that's kind of we say this on the episode as well, but you know when we were looking at albums from. An artist who could have had probably, you know, two, maybe three albums in that kind of top 10, 20. Like you say, kind of wanted to mix it up a little bit more and get a bit more variety in there as well. So, yeah, for sure. But yeah, so I felt like kind of wraps it up. It's been a bit longer than all on this first segment, but uh, <laughs> yeah. anyway, anyway. Um... So, on to the news. So, into the news we go. Into the news. Uh, there's not been at least from our point of view I, I don't feel like there's anything that I've seen that's blown my mind and been like wow yeah it's been a slow needs, news week this really. needs discussing there's a few a few little stories to uh, to discuss uh, first one that popped up for me we talked briefly about the coronavirus earlier mm. on and how I potentially could contract it hopefully I won't but but that's it's in the music world affected a few quite a few tours cancelled in the I think it mainly sort of, I think East Asia, um, 
Which is a lot of money lost, really. Yeah, especially well, like BTS have cancelled the Korean leg of the tour, which you'd, you'd assume is the biggest audience for them, really. Yeah. I think a lot of tours in kind of, I think just in gen- like East Asia in general, it doesn't say specifically, but like I think uh, Storms have to cancel some dates. Uh, unfortunately, Green Day, Green Day have uh, cancelled some dates, which is sad. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. But yeah, the main thing is that everything gets better. Yeah, tasks can get rescheduled. I mean, lives, I lives mean, going better. back to that, like it's <laughs> go back to the Royster Five Nine story. Well, but from previously, well, story. It's got too cool. <laughs> I just, I just <laughs> realised now what I've meant to be saying beforehand. <laughs> um, <laughs> This is how my mind works, James. You should know this by now. When, when we so right? When when is this meant? To, what were you trying to say before? <laughs> so in the in the Royce Five Nine thing, which is a say, there's a line in Freddie Gibbs's album where it's about anti vaccinations. Ah, oh, right. Okay. So there is a method to oh, my madness. Okay, okay. It just kind of comes and goes. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's kind of like going back to like what he was kind of saying there because he says it in his album like it causes his son to have autism. I does he actually believe that that as well? Or is he just saying it in bars? What I would say is watch the needle drop in uh, in a uh, review because Anthony Fantano says some things I didn't re- I won't I won't read really too privy to it. Maybe because we're we're both people in, in the UK that maybe don't realise how the sort of health services and how to treat black people over there. We don't really know about that, but there's some things that he mentions in the um in the review which he actually gets choked up about as well. So I think Royce has a right to believe that. Definitely has a right to believe it. Yeah, you mean stuff like get it, the stuff about uh, when people have been knowingly injected with diseases and stuff like well, that. Well, I think it's the malpractice of, of maybe yeah. how of how black people have been treated when they've mm-hmm. been when they've been ill and stuff like that over there, which is obviously terrible. So I can understand Royce's point of view, Freddie Gibbs' point of view. I'm not saying it's the right thing, but you're entitled to your opinion. Um, for it, so that's that's why it just in my head about <laughs> vaccination. I, really, I didn't say anything about that. Um, so yeah, hopefully we do get a vaccination, or it is eradicated soon enough. Yeah, because now technically it's now global pandemic. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. Good start to year. Yeah. Happy twenty twenty. So move, continuing our theme, we are now you know we're now a sports channel, we're now a sports podcast. We're a wild Super Bowl halftime. Now an American football podcast. What's the story, Chris? Well, we just seen this today. Um, Jennifer Lopez and Shakira's Super Bowl halftime show received over one thousand FCC complaints. This is what some uh, consequence of Sound dot net says. Viewers found it to be too sexually suggestive. Um. So, <laughs> right. So, okay. So apparently, the Super Bowl halftime show. Probably- if it, if anybody's not seen the the the, the halftime show. There's the the main well, in general. I mean, if you've seen Jennifer Lopez and Shakira perform before, they're provocative people. All, yeah, but you know the, you know they might like wearing a, you know, shorter outfit, shake their ass a little bit. There's a moment with uh, Shakira's tongue that stands out to me as being potentially provocative. I mean, it's all a meme. <laughs> <laughs> um, depends depends, uh, who depends we are, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Um, it says yes. Yeah, so declare the poems are too sexually suggestive, not family friendly, friendly enough, and was equivalent to exposing their children to a porno show. <laughs> <laughs> the complaints came from a pe- from people in forty nine states total, with over one hundred and forty co- complaints coming from Texas alone. <laughs> I do not subscribe to the Playboy channel. We do not buy porn for twenty dollars a flick. We simply wanted to sit down as a family and watch the Super Bowl. God forbid we expected to watch football and a, and a quick concert, but instead had our eyes, had, had our eyes molested, <laughs> said a Tennessee viewer who forgot the TV remote includes change channel and power off buttons as a consequence of sound, suddenly point out. Um, at no point uh, during the, the actual halftime show did they expose any genitals or nipples. Nor did they uh, do anything sexually sexual on camera. I mean, like you said, you could say that Shakira, but that Shakira thing is more of a more of a funny thing than anything else. Um, 
Yeah, I think it's a bit just... I think, you know, conservative people in America will be conservative people in America. And people will be upset by anything. Yeah. Doesn't matter what you do. I mean, it was, it was a good show. <laughs> well, it's right at the top of our power rankings at the minute. It's, well, of, of so, one of one. <laughs> of, of sexual provocativeness as well. Yeah, we, we might have a, a separate ranking yeah, for that. Yeah. How sexually prov- provocative will the 21 no. Super Bowl no, um, be? Yeah, it's like it's just, it was just kind of a funny thing to point out. I thought it was quite hilarious. People would complain about anything. Find anything to complain about. I'd be upset about anything as well. Yeah. Like, we do live in a bit of a, I hate the word snowflake, but we I do live in that sort of kind of era now. What like, makes me laugh about the, the whole, the snowflake thing though, is that it's usually, you know, you, 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 it's usually people on the right saying, oh, people on the left, you know, snowflakes, yeah. oh, safe space, all this bullshit. Then it's like, you fucking complain about Shakira sticking her tongue out, like. Yeah. Anyway, m- moving on, that's a minor story. Um, yeah. The Weekend and yeah. Kendrick Lamar. So I'll you, I'll let you you cover this one, because you, you really liked the album, didn't you? The Black Panther soundtrack album that the song is from. <laughs> okay, yeah, I can't remember the song, but yeah. Is it, is it, is it the main single? It was the, um, I can't remember what the... Was... It's not the one. No, it's not the one with. Uh, it's not with scissors. No, it's the, no, it's other not the one. one. With oh, it's the, oh, it's the other one. Yeah, I know, I know what song I'm about now. Wait, and what's the story again? It's to, to do with. Is it? Yay, sir. Have you got? Have you got the story up there? Yeah, yeah. So. I'm just. I'm trying to actually find the the actual song it was as well. I'm just not that right. Let's have a look. 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 We'll edit this bit out. As per usual, we do things on the fly. Is it just looking not even seen? Oh yeah, we, yeah, yeah, so. Oh, okay, it was. It was actually, it was Pray For Me. Ha! <laughs> there you go. On your cap. Got to sue me. I will see you, mate. <laughs> I'll so see yeah, you. it was, yeah, so yes, I, uh... Why have you put the news, the news article down? <laughs> so, because I know, I've, I know the news now. Okay. It's in there. So, the group has claimed... This is coming from a screen around here. I was referencing sources. The group has claimed that the song sampled their 2007 song, Sunrise, without permission. Now, given that we've not really planned this, we've not listened to it. So, you know, maybe for the next episode, we'll do a little side-by-side and see if we can hear the similarities. So, again, uh, from from screen around, well, it's, just, it's a quote from the book. Anyway, according to the group, their song had a distinctive choral performance compromised of male voices singing in their highest registers with animated pul- pulsing v- vibrato and developed via distinctive audio post-processing. That, to me, sounds more of a... It's less you've nicked our song and more that you've nicked something we were doing from our, on our song. Yeah. Which... And it's a massive reach. Yeah. And when did that song come out? Uh, 2018, I think. Black so Panther. we're now in 2020 and we're here and then we're trying to sue them now. It was 2018, yeah. Yeah, Traffic. so two years. Chris, get that bag. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> you get the bag when it's at the height of the prime and you get even more exposure for their own band as well as, you know what I mean? Like, why wait all of a sudden two years? Going, oh, we used to be relevant. We had one good album and then that was it. I just feel like... I, it's like these things where um, you hear about these, oh, well, this someone um, copied like my entire song. I think we even would discuss a bit like... Talk about Seven Rings. Seven Rings we? thing, right? yeah. yeah. The Seven Ring Theory, we'll call it. The Seven Ring Theory. And like, yeah, people are going to borrow ideas. So many artists hang out with each other anyway. I'm not saying this is the case, that... Things just get transferred, but like, subconsciously without even without even realizing. Yeah, I think I think it's a bit it, right. It's a bit different, isn't it? If you if you literally sample somebody's song into your song, yeah, and and don't you know that's a different thing. But I don't know. We talked well. We talked about yeah, Seven Rings. Talked about it with uh, Lizzo, True Thirts as well. I, I just feel like it's the reach. There's you know, given the trends in music. Stuff's going to sound similar. Mm. There's going to be crossovers. People might be influenced by certain things. It doesn't mean you have to go and 
you know, sue people. And but like, are we claiming though? Are they claiming that they have they've distinctively listened to that track that, in yeah. particular? Well, that's what it seems to be getting at, doesn't it? Not like I mean, yes, they were kind of big but not big. They've never been massive for everyone to really realise. And I'm not saying like Kendrick and The Weeknd wouldn't have listened to their songs ever, but like. I just don't. I just don't buy it. Well, I suppose you're not almost saying as well that so that original song was the first song to do that. Are you saying that you never yeah. listened to anything? No idea is original. Yeah, yeah. So why claim? Like, I mean, does it say how much they're trying to sue him for? <laughs> why you trying to pour some water? So <laughs> let's have a look. But I mean, I, I will. I mean, you know, we'll give him a listen because if it is the case that it's literally oh yeah shit that's like the exact same thing then fair enough but it doesn't really sound like that does it plus you could quite easily by coincidence have a similar song you know what I mean yeah this doesn't really the article reading here on screen room doesn't actually give a figure for what they're suing them for so it's one of it's I don't know maybe they're maybe they're just hoping that they'll be like yeah we don't have the time for this settle what out act, what about artistic license though yeah on my interpretation, you know, you might have exactly not like so not like they've created brand new chords, have they? You know what I mean? They're not like created brand new, a brand new way of like singing. All of a sudden, it was the vibrato performance, Chris. The pul- the is it pulsive, vibrate the vibrative, yeah, pulsating, pulsive, something like pulsating. That. Yeah, that's a bit sexually. Uh, Provocative, provocative, well. suggestive. That is. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's. I think they're gonna win that battle. So, yeah. We'll monitor the situation. Yes, I mean. we'll monitor the situation. I might sue somebody. Just to. It's like saying that person's name is Chris and he's got a lot of money. I don't like how he's using the name Chris, so I'm going to sue him. I mean, that's a bit of a bad analogy, but it's pretty much how I see, how I see it. Does it a reach? Do it. Okay. So, yeah, we'll monitor that situation. Another, another quick one for me as well to uh, to mention. I'll sue Chris Evans. The, yeah, yeah, good option. Yeah, if you're going to sue any Chris, I think he's. Uh, also, the. I don't know if you're aware of the YouTube live stream channel. Well, just live stream. Lo fi hip hop beats to study, relax to. I do know about that, actually. Yeah, did you. Did, so, it's a, it's a live stream that's always, always on YouTube. And you can go on there, listen to some lo fi beats to study and relax to and this week accidentally supposedly YouTube banned the account really that was doing it which means that the vid- the live stream was then taken down and had to get uploaded as an actual and then got uploaded as an actual video which was we should have found this before <laughs> This is how we do it. How how long was it? Why is it not? Um, why is it not? Um, it's twelve hours, twenty four hours, forty hours, eight hundred hours, nine hundred hours, one thousand hours. It was it was a it was a long time. Right. Okay. <laughs> let's just, let's go to let's one thousand years. Let's go to further now. Yeah. So why is no one fucking? It was a long fucking video, basically. Right. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go onto YouTube and find it. So this way, this way, coming. Yeah. So so the live stream got taken down. So then had to be uploaded, actually as just as a video then. And the video was over. <laughs> this number is escaping you, isn't it? Really, Where is it? this motherfucking video? It was over like it was over like fucking ten thousand hours or some stupid shit like that. We'll keep going off and I'll find out. I'll find out how long it is. You you take over with your story, Chris. Okay, so we'll briefly put put a pin on that and we'll kind of carry on with the next sort of, bit of small sort of news. Again, it's nothing we really looked into. It's on consequence of sound. Um, it says that major labels make one million dollars an hour off streaming. So 8% of the music industry's revenue came from streaming, which is interesting to say that a lot of artists don't say they get paid a lot, but yeah, they're making quite a bit of money in terms of labels. Um, so it says here, so Tom York may consider Spotify the, the last desperate fart of a dying corpse, but to major label executives, 
that smell is pretty sweet. According to a new report by Biz Music Business Worldwide, major labels are rating one million dollars an hour off streaming in twenty nineteen alone. So let's look at it. So for divisions of Universal Music, Sony Music Group, Warner Music Group, um, uh, Vivendi as well, by pocketing twenty two point nine million every twenty four hours last year, labels were essentially bringing in just under one million dollars. Every hour by by the way of the big three, that's obviously you know quite a lot of money to kind of rake in. To say that what was it zero point zero twelve p or something like that. Yes, yeah, so this yes, yeah, so this is the thing in it is that uh, yeah everything. In fact, I was literally right zero zero that dot zero twelve dot uh, cents for Apple for um on Apple Music and then zero point zero zero three per song on Spotify. Is that what goes to the artist? Is it? Um. Busy turns out always. So who report? Yeah, that's what the artists get. Yeah. So again, so yeah, this is the thing, and it so, so everything that you hear about streaming, and I guess one of the reasons why, well, partly one of the reasons I think why you know we like kind of physical release as well is that I'm not saying that record companies don't skim off most of the profit, mm. but I think you know the more goes towards the the artist, obviously you really pay more for it, but. Yeah, when you're talking about a cent per stream, it. I, know, I think in my head I had before that, it was, it was an issue like with the with the streaming service paying them. Yeah. But, it don't really seem to be the case now. It seems to be that, the streams generate plenty of money. It's just that. It's not divvied out properly. Yeah, it's just the money the record label gets that money, and then I like, there you go. There's our there's our nice chunk of profit. But that's that's major labels though as well, so they're always going to have a higher percentage of whatever contract it is, regardless. Um, and then that means, I mean, I always say independent is the best way of going forward, or or I'll even have an independent label that will provide you the sort of the promotion, but you've still got to do all pretty much everything else yourself. That's the way to go forward to get any sort of money anyway, unless you are an executive at a major label. That's the only way you're going to get more money, being on a major label, not being an artist, artist at all. And yeah, I, I'm not a massive fan in terms of the streaming aspect of artists don't get enough money. I, I like paying for physical stuff anyway, but it has saved me probably a lot of money over yeah, the years yeah, yeah. by doing so. But we've, that, said, we've said before, like you can't, especially the just in general, the amount of music that comes out now, never mind the fact that you know we're, we're listening to... Well, maybe not consistently, but no. you know, averaging you know maybe like kind of four albums a week or something like that. R realistically, you you can't expect to go out and even if you're buying a CD of it, you know, ten pound. You're talking, you know, forty quid a week, aren't you? Yeah. Minimum to listen to these albums. It's just, it's not realistic, and I think yeah, streaming is. It is the way forward, and whatever change back, we're kind of way too deep into it. What needs to change now is that maybe you slightly increase the price, which means that artists get a lot more money. That's that's the only way you can do it. I think a lot of the a lot of the thing about like the, the major level side of things as well is that with the, the way that all the the playlists and stuff are curated, you know, it it, it favors big artists don't you know the the, the, the playlist that are on mm. the the home screen i'm thinking back to when i think it was when scorpion came out yeah the drake album and literally every playlist on it was either it was either that or take care uh, not take care what was the um the uh oh more life more yeah. life that's it it was one of them two and literally every playlist even some that had no to do with it it was all on drake there. drake yeah. drake drake and then you know you if you go out and about i don't know cafes restaurants whatever They'll just fucking put the thing in, stick a Spotify playlist on. That'll be on repeat for twelve hours a day. Yeah, it it all favors these massive artists, doesn't it? Which is why, like, really, like these sort of coffee shops or anything like that should really look into if they want to be also independent coffee shops. Yeah. They should be sort of have, have either curate their own list or look at Peter Spice shows list <laughs> <laughs> and start putting sort of more credence in some of the artists that don't ever get sort of that sort of shine, but. That's that's the point. And again, you know, in terms of like people, there's there's both pros and cons on Spotify and Apple Music in terms of at least user interface, shall we say. Um, but 
you know, I always I'm an Apple kid in a way, so that, that will never change. But the fact that Apple do pay more to an artist kind of makes me feel a bit more comfortable with streaming. I think I think it's Tidal that pay the most, if I remember correctly. But then Tidal, although you do get sort of high end quality sort of stuff, it hasn't got not everything on Tidal is the high end quality stuff. I know. Yeah, yeah. And I think I, f- I feel like the the sort of the sort of gimmick of Tidal is worn off. I think a bit really, aren't it? Well, it looked I like think, the room of like Apple was gonna buy out Tidal. Yeah, so. I think I think they've basically pretty much given up on the whole exclusive like exclusive album thing, aren't they? I think everything that was exclusive on that one. Yeah, the more times exclusive now, is, is it's just right. yeah is just like you know like you look at like game wise you know like PlayStation, Xbox, stuff like that. You can even more get timed exclusive than anything else, which is fine. I don't really feel like it should be exclusive to you know they've they've got Spotify, we've got you know. Apple Music, I suppose, Amazon Music in a way, uh, and Tidal. There's op- There's obviously options how you want to listen to your music, which is good. But I think the big daddies there of, of Apple and Spotify, they kind of claim the market, really. That I don't think... Like, I mean, Apple Music is not used as much, probably. as I mean, I'm probably the only one I know that uses Apple Music, apart from my family, because I have the family account. But um, that's it, really. I mean, Spotify is, is most widely recognised because... It kind of came out as a sort of free service with adverts, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's the reason why. Whereas, at least, maybe that's the reason why Apple does pay more because if with Spotify you can get it for free, that's probably why they, you know, they, they don't charge that much for artists. But I don't know, it's just weird, really. I feel like something will have to change, and if it means increasing subscription prices, I'm, I'm all for it, as long as it's not too ridiculous. I mean, what paying, it's like I paid the family one, so it's like £15 a month. I was I was paying like when I was at H and V, hundred pound a month, <laughs> on CDs. Yeah, again, either way, like whichever way you compare it. I suppose if you depends how you listen to music. If you're consistently listening to a lot of new music, then you know you would pay a bit more. If you're not, if you're listening to, you know, the same few albums all the time, sort of thing. Maybe maybe not. But you, I don't. You could even look at like a, you know, like a like a tiered thing. If you are just listening to the same stuff. I don't know, you pay a bit less. If you want to listen to mm. a lot more stuff, I don't know, you pay a bit more. I don't, I don't know how it works, but anyway. So, next story is Lo-Fi Hip Hop Beats. <laughs> the return. The the YouTube <laughs> channel. So, we'll edit it out before and just do it. Like, no, no, we're not going to. Okay, we're not. Okay, so, <laughs> returning to it, I've done my fucking research. Lo-Fi Hip Hop Beats. Of oh, that that story from about two minutes. Oh ago. yeah, 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 yeah. This is like you, you, you Royce Annie Vax thing. We just <laughs> yeah. so it got taken down. Yeah. The the video that went up, it is thirteen thousand one hundred and sixty five hours, twenty three minutes, and forty four. How seconds. long did that take to upload? <laughs> so that's the thing. I mean, our podcast takes a little while to upload anyway onto YouTube, and that's only you know an hour, an hour and a half. So to give you a bit of context there, that is, uh, it is five hundred and forty eight and a half days, so about a year and a half, about a year and a half. If it was like on the on the basis of our how, how audio is okay. Yeah. So if you just start that playing right now, it'd finish sometime in what back end of August twenty twenty one. Wow. Wow. So there you go. That was worth the wait. Wanted that information. Mind blowing, mate. Mind blowing. Yeah. So yeah, b- bit of a not much actual news, more just conversation, conversation, conversation pieces. pieces. Yeah, that's what we are now. We're a Super Bowl podcast, conversation geography pe- podcast. podcast at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, you should need geography, Chris. I didn't say I didn't <laughs> talk <about it. laughs> Thanks, <laughs> I'm not talking to you specifically. I was just saying. I mean, it, the audience. You looked directly at me. The saying, audience. Where else were we meant to look? There's no one else here. You can look at you know the floor, mate. Look, look at that jewel water there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any any other no, any other news one, pieces? There's no more news. There's no more. No, okay. More. So to wrap things up, quite a few new releases actually this week. Um, there were a couple midweek midweek release. I think this is more just a scheduling thing, a selfish point of view for doing the podcast on a Friday. Midweek releases just annoy me. Just release it on a Friday. I don't mind singles. Yeah, album. So there won't. So there's two Princess Nokia albums. 
Oh, Nokia albums. Okay. Okay. <laughs> however you want to call it. <laughs> that released on King Wednesday, Cruelet, I think. King Crulet and Princess Nokia. Okay, okay. Um, thankfully, though, even though it's two albums, they are only about 25 minutes each, I think. So Yeah, I believe so. Combined, you are talking like a... A, a, a good 50 minutes, a reasonably but... A reasonably long also, album. Uh, everything is beautiful is thirty one minutes, okay. and everything sucks is twenty five minutes. There you go, it's about fifty five minutes or so. I think so, which is acceptable. Are you going to listen to it in kind of order? What do you mean? I mean, like, when I mean order in terms of release, though, because she released everything sucks first. Okay, I'll listen to that one first, and then time. released everything is beautiful after. That's, That's why I'm going to do. I can do that. I can do that. So I wonder because I think there's obviously a concept with that. Yeah. I feel like you know, because probably it's very two very distinctive albums. Um, yeah, which I've I kind of I've got hopes for it because so the 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 what was the album yeah nine ninety two I've never listened to that I really like and, uh, and yeah, I've always I really to like that it. album the then there was an EP in twenty eighteen which was uh, a girl cried red which I actually liked yeah I. Don't mind it, but well, yeah, that's about my that's my first into into yeah. what she. But well, nineteen ninety two is not not really like that. that yeah. Why, yeah. So um, I'm well, I'm hoping for well, what about Meta- metallic butterfly then? I don't actually listen to that one because that's that's one that she recorded before, but then release. She only I think she only released it, like she what released that after a girl cried red, didn't she? Yeah, well, I remember it was pretty good. Quite liked it. Yeah, so I've got kind of high up, but yeah. Why you do don't release albums on a Wednesday? Just do it on a, just do it on a Friday. Yeah, just easier. What about the thing about so, you know the Jean Grey and Quale Chris album? Everything's yeah. fine. Yeah, have you seen? Because that was on Mellow Music again. Fantastic label. I will be doing a think sponsor piece. Us. Sponsor think, us. Think, think piece at one point <laughs> about them. Um, they've they've uh, retweeted with the Everything's Beautiful artwork saying um, flattery is the. That's bullshit. That is, uh, I think they're just, I think they're reaching a little okay, bit, okay. but I can I can kind of get where they're coming from. If it's a joke, then that's fine. But I think it's a tongue in cheek. Yeah, but I mean, it might I don't know might get a bit more exposure, I guess. But um, I can kind of see where they're coming from though, because it is very similar. Well, that's a show that have you seen Napoleon Dynamite. Yeah, that's the that's that. That's more than Napoleon. Yeah, Dynamite, exactly. So if you're ripping yeah. anything off, that's you know, you're ripping yeah. Napoleon Dynamite off. But yeah, I'm excited. Hopefully, they're good. At least one of the hopefully at least one of them's good. I guess. Well, we'll see. We'll um, so give them a listen um, what else this week uh, new Caribou album which we talked about the well talked about the EP that came out only that came out like a month or so ago yeah. which I, I I enjoyed that talked about that a few weeks ago so and we basically said at, at the time we hope well we wonder if something will be coming soon and then um, the full ball. album so yeah definitely give that a listen other than that new uh, EP I think but a new Christine and the Queen's EP. Never, never, ever listen to that. No, I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give that a listen. I quite I actually. I quite like Christine and the Queen's. Oh, okay, it's an album apparently. Oh. It's 22 minutes long, but it's an album apparently. So, yeah. Sorry, I'm just laughing at the next thing one. we're gonna say. <laughs> uh, so there's a new RZA album. Which, well, I'm, ju- I'm just now sharing that to my best friend. Which, which is called Guided, Guided Explorations, Explorations yeah. which apparently is a meditated meditation album I, I don't like know it. I like that I'm going to listen to it like I said you know I listen to fucking Joe Pesci's Christmas album well <laughs> jazz shit. album so I, I mean I'm a big RZA fan I've seen him live and he's awesome but I li- this literally came out of nowhere I think I just I was just looking on Pitchfork for news articles and it suddenly just appeared and I'm like whoa half an hour long wow. nice little limp I listen on the way to the game tonight nice little half an hour oh that's uh, good you know at least it, then as well if you're timing your meditation Stick stick that Rizzo album on, and then when it finishes, you know you're done. You're done your half an hour. That is true. We'll, we'll do it straight after the pod. We'll do we'll do a live stream. We'll meditate on <laughs> we'll meditate on this floor on Twitch. Yeah, on Twitch, listening to that Rizzo shit. Uh, next. Have you mentioned Soccer Mommy? No, not yet. Not yet. Soccer Mommy. Yep. New um, album. New album. Did you ever listen to the previous album? I feel like I've listened. I didn't listen to it when it came out. I feel like I have listened to it at some point. Sorry, as a quick sorry, as I just said that I, I, I sent the RZA album to my uh, friend. My friend said, my, my best friend, what the fuck is that shit? <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, go back to Soccer Mummy. Um, I, I'm just trying to remember what, what was it. Was it the self-titled album last time? I think it was. 
Uh, clean last time, 2018. Oh, clean. I remember it being good. I don't remember much about it. No, much. I can't remember much about yeah. it. And I think I listened to it because I think Pitchfork gave it a decent review and got a good aggregate review on, on, on any decent music. So definitely something I'll check out. Uh, it's called The Colour Theory. Um, I didn't, didn't realise it, it was dropping so soon. Yeah, so. Um, and other stuff, I suppose we've got uh, real estate, the main thing. Um, I, I haven't listened to real estate for a long, long while. Um, in fact, I got to looking at this since 2011. <laughs> okay. When Days came out. Um, so... I don't know why maybe a few albums have passed me by at yeah. this, it looks like or in mine but def I'll definitely check him out I did like Days a lot it was very much similar to like that sort of vaccine sound back mm -hmm. then of what I remember so I'd imagine they've kind of evolved since then so hopefully um, that'll be a good album we've got new Little Baby album Never Little Little Baby ever no so. and then this is again the the issue this, this, this curse it's an hour and a minute long yeah, but uh, yeah, <laughs> it's twenty <laughs> tracks, Tw and they're not like uh, none of them are skits either. They're all at least two minutes over, uh, over two and a uh, half minutes. Well, I was the shortest track on there, two minutes forty three, two minutes. Okay, two minutes thirty six. The intro track, the first track on there. Yeah, it's the smallest. smallest. Yeah. Anyway, well, anyway. we may get around there. I don't know. I'm not really a little baby enough to kind of gravitate straight towards them. Um, Disclosure New EP I'm not, I'm, Again I'm not listening to Disclosure Since that first major album Is it, Was it called Disclosure? No Settle I don't remember the second album Very much But I didn't really realise The second album to be honest um, well, This apparently is an album as well But it's only 24 minutes long Well yeah. it has an EP on here What is it? Maybe it's Spotify it's just shit. Um, So I'd be interested to see what the, what the sound is like now in 2020 So That'd be interesting Um I thought there were some other ones that you rattled off to me before that I just I just didn't, didn't write on the I paper. just didn't write down. Yeah, so <laughs> there is. What's, what's Mellow Music one... this week, Chris? <laughs> there's no Mellow Music. Okay, okay. right. That's the, that's, that's the unfortunate thing. So there's four more albums I'm going to mention. Okay, uh, we'll take we'll leave the rest the rest of them moment all hip hop really, but apart from one of them, the Heliocentrics. Uh, they're like a a jazz sort of band, um, that did. Released something on Stone's Throw back in the day, where it's like that's how I knew about them because of like Mad Lib and things like that. And I believe they've done a few tracks with like people like Doom and Guilty Simpson and stuff like that. But this is like the mainly sort of like it says psychedelic as a as a genre on here. Um, for for on um on Apple Music, but I'm pretty sure unless they're different heliocentrics. Oh, no, well what? And there's two versions here. <laughs> they're still on their own. They're the same, okay. they're the same band. band, okay. They are the same band. Um, yeah, I, I I remember getting out listening to these guys probably since 2009, really, or, or you know, over a decade ago. Um, out there, in fact, yeah, this is this is this was the album I really liked. 2007, that was. 2007. That's the last time I ever heard of them properly. Um, and they had some. That yeah, was a really really good album. Very electronic sort of jazz sort of stuff, and I'm guessing this will be the same sort of style. So I was quite pleased to see this a new album come out by them. Um, then the next one all hip hop. So we've got G Herbo, PTSD, uh, I believe from Chicago. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's from Chicago. In fact, so he's someone I've never really properly checked out. Um, I remember. Humble Beast not being a very good album, according to some friends. So I'd see what he sounds like now. He's I, what I've heard of him. The brief is quite a decent rapper, so I'd see an actual full project from him. Yeah. So never actually. So I might check him out, but it's worth mentioning, I guess. Uh, Smoke Dizza. Uh, Close mouth, don't get fed. Do you much know much about Smoke Dizza at all? Not really. He loves wrestling. That's one thing. Uh, <laughs> That's all I need to know. <laughs> uh, so he has quite a lot of like wrestling sort of lines, but he's a he's just a really good sort of um, typical New York rapper. Really, it's very like sort of action Bronson-y sort of styles, sort of lyrics and stuff. Um, 
kind of knew about him from a rapper called Currency, where we heard him of all before. Currency is a guy who just basically gets high all the time and just releases a project pretty much every bloody day almost. But he's always pretty decent as well. So as uh, Smodius has always been pretty, pretty consistent in terms of rapping, and I'm always, I always intend to check his albums out. But sometimes I don't become sort of a priority. But it looks like some good features on here. So we've got like West Side Gun from Griselda. We've got Dave East is on there. Uh, Buddy's on there. Wale's on there as well, which is pretty good. So the last album I remember hearing from him was the one with uh, Pete Rock. Um, don't smoke, don't smoke rock. And that was a really, really good album as well. So I'm interested to see what that's like. Just again, just New York, New York rap. Um, very golden age sort of sounding. How how he usually picks his beats in a way, and the last one is Ramson Badbone's Death Mask. Uh, mentioned High Focus at the start of the uh, podcast. Um, this is a guy who they've had him for a while now. He keeps dropping an album. I didn't check the album last year, but the album before I remember being pretty decent. Um, so I'm, I'm always interested to see what High Focus produced because more often than not, they're pretty decent records. And plus, I always want to support UK hip hop regardless. So, mm-hmm. you know, when it's when you don't want any grime sort of style sort of songs, you, if you want some hip hop that's is UK based, high focus on the label for you. And they've always churned out some pretty decent projects. So that's pretty much it in terms of my well, what I've added to my for this yeah for the, for this week yeah. And then so because of the the timing, so we're not we're not actually recording next week. So when it comes to recording the next episode episode 11 we will actually have two weeks worth of stuff to listen to mm. um but you know obviously what's coming out next week we don't we won't get a chance to talk about it before it comes out yeah so but you know follow us on twitter because the stuff that we are listening to that comes out next week that we oh the, the, the album came out <laughs> sorry because <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really on my list but it's it's strange right. plug in plug in his twitter up chris do you just carry on it's all right. I think <laughs> this is how my brain works. You know this already. Um, so I remember talking about Legendary was it last week or year be- week before? And he said year before. <laughs> so um, but one of their tracks is I think it's on one of our playlists anyway. So they're like a New York sort of, well, all over the place really. But most most of them are based in New York. Um, sort of backpack, sort of slight golden age sort of sound, but sort of very sort of underground at the same time. Uh, they've released an instrumental album. Where each member of the entire clique, even the producers, obviously the producers as well, um, have all made a beat. Um, it's called uh, Pounds, so it's only twenty minutes long. So I presume there's some pretty decent hip hop beats in there. The all the tracks are only about each track is about a minute long, so mm-hmm. it's not too bad as well. But I just thought I'd mention that. A couple of yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so you know, other stuff we are listening to, it'll be on the Twitter through the week as we are listening to it with links to the albums. So if, even with me being away next week and. Still gonna try get a chance to listen to some stuff. So, yeah, follow us there. We'll see what we are listening to, and then episode eleven, we'll we'll talk about that shit. Yeah, hopefully, we'll have a, we'll have a two a good two solid weeks listening to stuff. And we'll have loads to talk about. We'll try it anyway. We'll try. We'll try. So, other than that, still follows on Twitter, follows on Instagram. Let us know what you've been listening to. Is there anything that's come out that we've missed that we might not listen to? Any news you want us to cover? Yeah, any big stories, any breaking stories to to cover? But yeah, and then follow us on you whatever, however you listen to podcasts. Follow yeah. us there. There are a few other uh, platforms that I think that I've got in mind. That I think we should try look at, but you know we'll get to that. And then tune in next week for episode ten, the decade, the episode. top tens of the twenty tens. The ten tens. That's a catchy title, line, isn't it? Ten tens. Yep. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's gonna be called. So yeah, that'll so that'll be up Saturday again, Saturday at nine AM as normal next week. Tune in. Yeah, and it might be a episode nine point nine. It's before that. Possibly. We'll yeah, if I can work out that. <laughs> or maybe do it a bit later on. But there will be a nine point nine. There'll for, be a 9.9 for at obvious some reasons. Point. If it has to be in good enough for chronology club. No. Anyway, any anything else to add? No? No. Not really. Well, there we go then. That's it. Nine over. Nine. Nine? Nine. Peace. Nine. Nine. Nine.